Hail Snydra. So we've had a whole host of new updates on the Justice League Snyder Cut in the last couple of weeks and this video we're going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about the movie. This includes discussing the Grace Randolph interview with the main man himself, a Jim Lee storyboard that details the nightmare vision and a lot more. There will be some spoilers here so if you want to go into the film without any of the surprises ruined then I recommend that you turn off now. Make sure you drop a thumbs up if you enjoy the content and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for breakdowns and all the big DC news every week. As always, this is the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Definition, now let's get into our video on the Snyder Cut updates. Ok so Grace Randolph from Beyond the Trailer dropped an exclusive interview with Zack Snyder himself yesterday that detailed a lot of ins and outs on the project. The 22 minute back and forth between the two covered a lot of things that we'd only heard rumoured and they both went into a lot of detail on the project. Now I know you and you live a very hectic lifestyle watching The Hub all the time so if you're too busy to watch the entire interview then the first part of this video will be recapping everything you need to know about it. I don't want to give anyone a slap in the grace though, so I've been graceful enough to leave a link to the full interview in the description because I'm not a disgrace when it comes to people at disgrace. Damn. So they open by discussing the runtime of the film, which will be roughly 214 minutes, however Snyder did hint that it could be even longer. He didn't want to say specifically what the exact time was as some fans might be like well where did my minute go? Warner Brothers give us that extra minute that you clearly cut out. However he did promise that it would be around about the three and a half hour mark. So you'll probably end up looking like Robert De Niro at the start of The Irishman when you watch it and come out looking like well Robert De Niro at the end of The Irishman. Now what this leaves room for are reshoots and additional moments. We're still unsure over whether these will be added due to the pandemic ceasing a lot of filming, however we do know that Snyder wished to shoot a scene revealing Martian Manhunter and when running a giveaway he teased a potential Batman, Superman and Lois moment. Whether these come to fruition or not we don't know but the fact that the runtime does have room to be extended or shortened, please not shortened, does mean that things on the whole can change. As for continuity, this is something that's been wondered. And as of now, we don't really know whether the Snyder Cut will replace the Whedon one as the accepted version of the film that drives the DCEU going forward. There's also things around Matt Reeves' Batman which has left more question marks surrounding it than the Riddler's skimpiest uniform. However, Snyder did state that when they shot the film in 2016, they had a grand vision for the DCEU, but that since then it's kind of grown into its own thing. Whilst he didn't out and out say whether the film's impact would be negated by the new direction that things were going, he did say that he views it as sort of going off on its own path, separate from the current direction of the DCEU. Snyder confirmed that the upcoming DCEU movies were probably more in line with what was set up in the theatrical cut and that if we are looking at everything we shouldn't view it as a sharp continuity and that there are different avenues available. He said that the idea of the multiverse had opened up a lot of opportunities for the company to explore and that Justice League will sort of be its own thing classed as the Snyderverse whilst other things can exist around it. He viewed Man of Steel, BBS and Justice League as being his trilogy and that this was purely going to be a continuation of that story. To him Superman was a person that had to go on an arc. Though people have labelled his version as being an evil Superman and even Grace said this in the interview, he did specify that he wanted a relatable version of the character that would grapple with humanity. Superman was going to be a reflection of the world at points and the trilogy was supposed to take him through his life, death and resurrection in which he would learn to grow and change to become the best version of himself. Juxtaposing this, Bruce was supposed to mirror Superman and Snyder said that Bruce kind of got the focus over Batman and BVS because they wanted to show his humanity to you and how he went to the edge of the abyss and managed to come back from it. Snyder also brought up Matt Reeves' as new Batman and said that he was a fan and was excited to see what they were going to do with it. He also stated that he was a producer on Wonder Woman 1984 and that he had an invested interest in what Patty was doing. Zack wants the Snyder Cut to be viewed similar to a great comic book run and he said that the medium allowed him to do what he wants but that he was aware there will always be things that come after his work which will take place in other continuities and universes. So it does seem like the Snyder Cut will sort of be its own standalone thing 
However, it is set to introduce Darkseid, who we know will be featuring in the New Gods movie, so who knows what will happen. Personally, I think that, with the Flash movie being a Flashpoint film, that the best elements of this universe and the other movies will be brought together to reform the continuity, and the new Justice League cut may have some of its elements taken across, whilst others remain purely as part of Zack's vision. I think for the moment we should just enjoy what we have, but I am excited at the idea that the studio always has the option to take the universe where they want. Grace also asked about Wonder Woman and Aquaman, and how some fans felt that, due to Whedon's vision, they were slightly underplayed. Many have wondered what the Snyder Cut was going to do differently with the bear, and Snyder reiterated that he hadn't seen the theatrical cut, so wasn't sure of what was different. He did however say that he was excited that these two loners were going to join a team setting. He also said that Wonder Woman had a lot of things going on, namely what she left behind on her home, and what she would be doing going forward. Wonder Woman of course ages very, very slowly, and he said that the timeline of Wonder Woman 84 taking place before this movie allowed for a lot of possibilities. Again, the theatrical cut will be more in line with the direction that the DCEU is going, whereas Snyder doesn't really set things up with a complete trajectory for Aquaman or his solo movie. Because Snyder has been given complete creative control, he doesn't want to bring things in line and therefore doesn't have to stick too much to the plan which is allowing him room to explore. Snyder also discussed Ray Fisher aka Cyborg's role and how his characterization would be. He says in his cut, Cyborg goes on a huge journey and that he represents what it is to create a community and bring people together. Though it was made in 2016, he said that these themes are more important now than ever with the idea of equality and learning to grow together becoming more prevalent. In the film, we will be discovering Cyborg's origins and his relationship with his parents alongside what it truly means to be human, which are all interesting themes. The director closed out the interview by stating that he might even be showing a small clip at this Saturday's upcoming Justice Con. His panel is due to take place on the 25th of July at 5.30pm EST, and he's going to show just a tiny, tiny clip from the upcoming movie and drop a cool little announcement just for the fans. We have no idea what this is going to be yet, but they both sound really good and I'm very excited. I'll obviously keep an eye out for whatever these are this weekend, and as always, bring you up to date with the movie news as we get it. Now before we get into the rest of the video, I just want to let you know we're giving away a free copy of the MCU Infinity Saga box set to one random subscriber. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on the updates in the comments section below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of August and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. Okay and finally we have a leaked storyboard that was created by Jim Lee which showed a pivotal scene at the end of the Snyder Cut. This was to take place in the Nightmare Vision setting and it's likely that this would be how the film ended. If you don't know, Justice League was originally called Justice League Part 1 and it was going to set up the following Justice League films which would play out the Nightmare version of the universe in which Darkseid would invade Earth, Lois would die and then Flash would be forced to travel back in time to warn everyone of what was coming. The scene which was posted by the Cultured Nerd picks up five years after the events of Justice League and sort of acts as a flash forward which the following film would inevitably set up. The text is a little bit difficult to read but we have a transcript which says the following. Five years later, sand dunes, smouldering solar pits, gothic spires rising from the desert. Once this was Gotham, now like the rest of the earth. It belongs to Darkseid. Coming over the dune, post-apocalyptic Batman, as seen in BVS, and also Definition's fancy dress costume. With a ragtag army of rebels, the surviving members of the Justice League walk over the rise of a dune to see the dilapidated Wayne Manor. Batman leads them. Flash drags what's left of Cyborg behind him. Bruce looks up in the sky grimly. We need to get inside before night. He's coming. So not only does it sound like the best Batman impression of all time, it also sounds like a really, really cool way to end the movie and I would absolutely love to see this play out on screen. I think it might even be what Snyder was talking about when he said that the continuity should be viewed as something that will be separate. It doesn't look like DC are heading down the Nightmare Vision route, but anything is possible at this moment. In order to get this scene done, they would need to get Ben back which is an unknown quantity at this point, 
and there really could be a number of things that could happen in regards to the film. In addition to this, we also got a mock-up of the original Steppenwolf design amongst how his base was going to look. This really excites me as it teases the kind of thing that we could be seeing in the upcoming film and at this moment it really feels like DC are putting that all in to deliver the best film possible no matter what. I love that there's going to be no compromises and continuity to really worry about so that Zack can deliver his complete vision instead of worrying about setting up future films. I do think that DC will still do nods to this movie in the future but even if they don't it's going to be great to see his vision on the big screen. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the updates and what you hope to see in the movie. Comment below and let me know and I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone for getting me to 300,000 subscribers. It's been an incredible journey. I want to thank every one of you and thank you so much for Jennifer Yana every week. You're the best. You're the best. <laughs> now if you want to support the channel from as little as 99 cents a month then please click the join button below. We massively appreciate it and as a thank you you get access to content early. When it comes to chat after the show, either follow us at Heavy Spoilers or click on the Discord link in the description below. Those are the best ways to keep up to date with us, so hopefully we see you over there. But if not, I'll tell you what mate, you can go do one. I'm just kidding, come back, come back, please, come back. Anyway, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Cheers.